Dawson Rider with you. Hey YouTube, Dawson Ryder here with my review of the Power Rangers Super Ninja Steel Epic Hero Set, with epic in quotation marks. Um, but I see what you did there with the Brody bit, that's at least somewhat clever-ish? I don't know. Anyway, so this set was originally supposed to release as a Toys R Us exclusive, but we all know what happened there. Um, it includes the three Lion Fire modes for red, blue, and gold, which I believe are the only ones we're getting. I don't remember us ever seeing yellow. And I don't think we'd ever get the girls, because I don't think they even used them in a ninja, or did they? I don't know. But we wouldn't get them anyway, because we're not even finishing the master modes, which is going to bug me forever. Um, but the real special thing about the set is the Mick version of the Red Ranger suit. And then also, as kind of afterthought, you have Galvin X. Um, and this guy, who I think is the only one in this set I actually already had. Um, the reason I picked this up... It's kind of, it was like 60 bucks on Amazon, which is kind of pricey, but luckily, like, I wanted this figure the most out of any of them, but luckily, I had never found this guy. Like, I actually found these two a long time ago and was waiting to do the review for when I found him, but I've never seen him in stores individually. So, um, luckily I never opened them and I just ended up returning them and... Um, so now I can review these, and I didn't have Galvin X either, so that's a fun backstory on why I got this, but yeah. So uh, my point about that spiel is this is a good way to get all these guys if you didn't find them yet or didn't get them yet or whatever, and then you get this guy as a bonus. Um, but let's go ahead and get started going over them. I'm gonna start with, um, for me the most important part of this set, which is the Mick version of the figure, which is identical to the regular release for the Red Ranger, just the different colored sash. So it was super easy for them to do. I am glad we got it, um, just because, you know, I do like Mick, I like Kelson Henderson, um, and I, I like that I have a figure of one of the different um, Akaninja suits. So, you know, it's fine. It's it's a decent figure, just like the other Ninja or the Ninja Steel figures. You know, they did a pretty good job on it. I think the sash looks pretty good. Um, the articulation remains the same as all the other figures in the past. Luckily, I have haven't had any loose joint problems uh, with these figures um, in this whole set. I mean, I'm, I can't speak for everybody. You do have this red version of the saber, which I I feel like is supposed to count as the 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 super blade one, but maybe it's just special for this. But yeah, this was like the main reason I bought the set, so I'm happy to have it. I don't think if you have most of these figures, it's worth picking up at this price. I would wait for a sale or something of the like. But yeah, there's that. Um, the Lion Fire mode ones are kind of weird for me. I feel like they don't look as good as they could. Because I do like this mode, but there's something about them that feels off and a little bit cheap. I mean, I know that's what a lot of people think of Bandai of America, but I always thought that their 5-inch figures were pretty solid. And these aren't awful, but there's just something off about them. I think the head sculpt's okay. I think they did an okay job at that. I like that the silver's a bit shiny. This part's kind of okay, but when you get down into here, this looks kind of cheap. Like, it almost looks like they merged what's usually a five inch figure with, um, like, the aesthetics of the bike figures, which usually just feel cheaper. Cheap, 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 cheap. You are just a chicken. Um, you do have this little bit back here. You see all these sticking off here to put these, um, on their backs, which is kind of okay. I do kind of hate how it leaves this giant, uh, you know, peg sticking off the sword, but what are you gonna do? And the back looks super basic. Obviously the articulation is the same. Like I said, I found him and I found Blue a long time ago, but I didn't open them, so I'm, I'm at least kind of glad to have them for completion's sake, and it's kind of the same here. You know, I'll be honest, I was never a huge fan of them just putting the Lion Fire armor or, um, over, or the Chosette's armor over the regular Rangers. I think it would have been really cool to get, um, you know, custom colored armor for each of them, like a blue colored armor, gold colored armor, yellow colored armor, so forth. I honestly originally thought that Bandai America and Saban might do that before we got the master modes, but instead they just did their own thing. Here's gold. I think he's my favorite of the bunch, just figure-wise, because he looks a little bit less weird, although this blue is super weird. He comes with his, his standard weapon here. But I don't know, maybe it's just because it took me forever to find him and I like the, the gold suit, but... Yeah, there's just something off about these guys. Like, I, like I said, mostly, even though I have my problems with it, I do like this armor. Um, and I was at least semi-looking forward to these figures, but there's just something cheaper about these guys than usual, which is just kind of a drag, man. Um, this guy, I actually believe I reviewed him already, but he is one of the cooler monsters. I do like his design. I think if I remember right, I wasn't planning on picking most of the Ninja Steel monsters up, but I liked his design enough that I got him. But it's a pretty decent design. The color scheme's a little bit weird. It's a little bit more of a normal bone white, which is a weird way of describing it, whereas this one looks more... This looks like, oh, you got, you know, yellow teeth. You need to go to the dentist guy. Um, and there's not a lot of details on him in terms of paint, but I think they did a pretty good job on the sculpting, so he actually looks like a pretty 
cool figure. Um, the articulation is basically, you know, moving around here. You can't really move in and out. You got elbow joints. You got pretty decent leg joints here. You can't bend his legs or anything though. And his head and chest are all one piece, so there's nothing that really moves there. Um, you do get the sword weapon, which is removable. So not a lot of articulation. I did have a little bit trouble standing this guy, which was kind of weird. Um, let's see. If he, oh, he's actually gonna stand now. All right. Now we got Galvanax, who is the main villain, who I feel was actually fairly forgettable. Like compared to Sledge, who disappeared after the first season last year, I always forget this dude existed. And this figure isn't awful. It's not the best. Um, I think I remember from the few Ninja Steel villains that I reviewed that they felt like they took a turn for the worst in terms of detail. Like, this is really basic. They got some pretty good sculpting going on, but it, it feels like there's something missing about him. It feels like they're a halfway point or a half measure. Like, he doesn't look awful. I think the character design's cool and the figure looks kind of neat. I like that the gold paint actually looks gold. It looks more gold than the legacy gold Zeo figure. Um... But there is something off about him, too. When you look at the pictures of the character in the show, there's just, I feel something off. It's kind of hard to describe in a way, but, you know, if you're a huge fan of this guy in Ninja or um, in Ninja Steel, then, you know, it's at least something. Uh, again, you can move his arms around, single elbow joint, you've got a pretty decent leg joint. You actually have knee bending for him and the head articulation, which is nice. Comes with his weapon here. But yeah, that's pretty much about the it for this uh, this set. Um, overall, like I said, it's kind of pricey if you you know only want a few figures out of this. So I recommend just maybe waiting for a sale. Even without that, this set isn't anything too special. Honestly, the only figure I really like out of this is this guy because he's kind of more of a special figure um, from both the Ninja and from Ninja Steel. But even if you don't own them, these figures aren't that great. The main reason I got it was for completion's sake because I wanted to complete, like the five inch Bandai America figures is always something I've collected. So I wanted to complete what they released. Um, so that was another reason. But I, my point is, is that unless you really, really, really want these figures, um, I would recommend waiting for a sale because they're just really not that great. They're just, it's really going out on a whimper here. And you know, personally, if it was me, instead of including these two villains in this set, I would have included the other two variants for this, which was the one for Brody's dad. And then they have like the Dark Aka Ninja, which I don't remember if we have used or are going to use. I don't think so. But even without that, I don't think it would have been that weird to release it, even if we never used it, given that Bandai usually releases a lot of non-show things. Like, I would have been way more excited about this set if it included the Brody's Dad variant for this and the Dark Arkaninger, Dark Arkaninger, just because it would have been way cooler to have. And they call it the Epic Hero set, but then you have these two guys in it. Like, and Galvanax was the only, the really one I wanted because he's a main villain. But that's just my two cents. But anyway, until next time, don't like, comment, subscribe, and of course, don't forget to climb the steps and ring that bell to get the notifications for all my videos. Till next time, Dawson Ryder, signing out.